All right. Okay. I believe I'm live. Here we are. Welcome everyone to the live stream to this private viewing this docking um, <clears throat> docking training and Q&A and everything. Uh, my name is Nick. I'm just going to wait for everyone to join here at the moment. We've got viewers on pretty fast, which is great. Um, if you are here, just throw something in the comments so I can see who I've got with me. I've got David Pritt here. Hi, Nick. Keen to learn hints and tips on docking without assistance, shorthanded, especially in a crosswind. Excellent. David, we will be certainly talking about that in the process we're going to go through for all of this. Um, so if you, uh, if you are out there, which is great, um, make sure to put your comments, put your questions into the comments section here, um, and uh, I will get to them either at that moment uh, while I'm doing it or um, slightly later, <laughs> depending on when I, when I arrive uh, at your question and whatever I'm talking about at the moment. So, um, excellent. Timothy Hartman's here. Looking forward to this. Excellent. Good, good. So, um, I've got sort of subjects that I want to go over with you guys and I've got the um, iPad here. I'm going to try and draw on some diagrams, some videos that I've done there. Uh, JP Dalton, hi, watching in sunny Manchester. Excellent, John Paul, thank you. You're here, Sam of all trades, eyebrow, eyebrow. I'm not quite sure what that means, but okay. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna run some videos. I'll talk about the process that we go through and we're really gonna look at the order of which we do things and our approaches based on the wind direction. Um, now, unfortunately, I don't have a million docking, but I tried to film one for you today uh, of us docking exactly of the situation docking today um, in the marina uh, this morning and the drone decided to run out of battery um, two and a half minutes before I came to the dock so it was forced landing and I couldn't couldn't get that footage so I apologize but we will we'll get other others out there all right good morning daft Kevin there we go Dory thanks for doing this you are most welcome Dory Tom Spielman excited about our two trips ready to learn excellent okay um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited too. So let's let's dive straight into this. So for starters, let's go a little bit of context. Uh, I've got a shot here of um, uh, how do I do this? I've got this here. This is a shot of um, Viz in Kut that is um, uh, I think on it might be on one of your itineraries anyway. But this is a really good example of uh, the docking. I'll just play, let that play that to run um, the docking situations you're going to end up with at the uh, at certain places so uh, what we've got uh, right here is this area here is called Kut uh, or Luca Luca Kut it's um, what we call that area of Vis um, and we're just zooming in on that like that this is the mooring field area where you can pick up mooring balls throughout that area and if I just pause that uh, this over here this is Lukavis, okay? So you can see, uh, if I just back that up a little bit, um, uh, this area here is one section of dock where you can dock your boat stern to uh, along here and bow lines, lazy lines, etc. cetera. Uh, there is an, a couple of mooring balls up over here. Obviously these are all parked boats. Actually, I won't go around all of them. These are all moored boats here. Um, and then these are at anchor, so there's not mooring balls out there. There's also some spots to anchor and things over here. But irrelevant of that, really, this is the section I'm going to talk about right now because it is a very common place to come in and dock. Uh, play that video. Whoops. Uh, to come in and dock in the situations you're going to be in when you're here in Croatia. So, like always, the most important thing uh, to consider when you're docking is going to be the wind. All right, now in this case, the wind is blowing this way. And so uh, ideally, well, uh, and when I say the wind's blowing that way, actually it was blowing that way. And that's the most common direction you're going to get when you dock here in Vis at Kut. Uh, but right now it's actually kind of gone really calm. You can tell by, by all of the boats, they're all kind of in, in different directions because it's gone really calm. So, um, but when we come into, into Kut like this, let's just zoom in a little bit more on them. Um, as it comes in there. Uh, they're all docked stern to like this, and of course, could being a corner, um, they've got a couple of intricacies there to worry about. But as a brief overview, come on, get nice and overhead drone shot. Um, I don't, can't remember when I shot this. I think it was last year sometime. 
or maybe the year before. I'll see which boat I was on. <laughs> uh, last year, maybe the year before. I'm on this boat here. Um, okay, so when the boats are sitting in here like this, uh, you've got these these main ones over this section here. All right, and then generally in the size of the group that I'm talking to here, we're going to be sort of that 35s and 35s to 50s. They're going to be docked from this point um, around to here. Now, the sea breeze, the prevailing northwest, is going to be coming in uh, in these two directions, like this. That is the worst arrow I've drawn to date, and it's going to swing in this direction as well. Okay, so we're going to have these sort of two areas that will pull in. Um, uh, uh, that's going to affect the way we're docking. Now it can get quite big in the afternoon. So in a position like, let's clear all that out, in a position like um, this boat is in here, we're just going to pick on this boat here. How are we going to pull our boat into that dock? We, we need to be able to approaching the correct way on the wind. I'm just going to skip through this video and see if I've got a more overhead shot. There we go. Um, so let's deal with the wind coming this direction like this. So it's obviously going to blow our port bow around. Now, a big part of what I'm going to talk about today with all of this is that reversing stern into the wind is your best point of control. And please throw the questions up. If you've got questions while I'm going through this, just throw the questions up uh, so I can address them as we go. Um, but stern into the wind is your most control, especially on a mono hull, because you're going to be like, you're, you're driving from there. This is my boat that I use like this. Um, I can drive it up here actually. So say this is our, this is our boat and it's got a rudder here. Okay, it's gonna pivot around about this area here and reverse because it's pulling, the engine is there and it's pulling from that point and the, and the rest of the bow is kind of just like a flag it will follow so when you reverse stern into the wind like that you've got much more control um, similar thing to that let's get rid of my boat um, the wind is going to carry the bow of the boat a lot faster <laughs> opinion it's a nice arrow <laughs> what do you say thanks mate <laughs> um, when um, it's gonna carry the bow of our boat much faster than it's gonna carry the stern when you beam on. So if you bring your boat straight out, let's get rid of my really nice arrow, and we're gonna leave it up over this way. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, if, if, we, if you come out here on boat out here and try and reverse straight back in, obviously you're gonna get a drifting effect and the boat's gonna head this way, but you're also, unless you've got quite a lot of speed, you're gonna have a hard time keeping the bow from blowing away like that. So what I tend to, what I well, no, what I do and what I teach is that we want to um, we want to counter effect, we want to counter the 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 push on the wind by bringing our boat further down something like this. That's that's a terrible boat. I definitely need a, a picture here. I'm going to bring the boat down here and then I'm going to reverse in a fashion like this. Because as I come stern into the wind and then reverse my stern around, the momentum is going to end up going into the wind. And it's going to counter what the wind's blowing. And you're going to get this moment that you're able to pause in um, and go straight while you're trying to get into the lee of that other boat. Or even if you don't have another boat to dock on, that's what you've got to do. Okay, so all of, all of the situations where it's possible you want to set yourself up reversing stern into the wind and then swinging your bow towards the wind that's the that's the that's the goal especially in a tight marina because if you turn your bow with the wind so for instance clear that drawing we we reverse we reverse because no, no one would go straight down there but we reverse from this position oh my gosh i need arts lessons someone we reverse from this position and then we turn like this then the momentum of your turn is going to push your bow that way. The wind is going to push your bow that way, and it's going to carry on. Um, curious, out of the the group that we're looking at here, um, how many have got bow thrusters on the boats that they've um, that I've ordered? I'm going to do, I do all this as if as if there's no bow thrusters. Okay, this is the whole whole plan around this. But let me know if you do if you have got a bow thruster, and let me know the um the model of boat you've booked as well in the comments because I'd like to know. Who's got a, and if they know if they've got a single rudder or a twin rudder, because that changes things a little bit as well. So 
that's that's one of the the concepts we're going to work on here. I've got a couple of videos that we can we can check out, and we're going to work on those in a minute. Um, I've just bought this app for the iPad, but I don't have a fancy iPad with a pencil, so I'm drawing on it with my finger um, so that I can draw on videos I've got to to help you guys out with this. So, couple of examples here. Which one are we going to go for first? We're going to go for this one here. Okay, so oh, Jason says just one boat has bow thrusters. Great. David's on a Lagoon 42 with a bow thruster. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm David. I'm not going to go massively. I'm not going to talk about catamarans as such in in this. The, the theory is the same home where we go, but because this session is about these guys on the mono hulls, we're going to roll with that. Um, but that's all right. We'll we'll still be able to talk about that in the future. So this was a, this was a video. I think I'm on board this. No, I am on board this boat, or I'm on the dock. Anyway, um, all dual rudder Oceanus 35s and 41. Okay, cool. So at this point, coming into the marina, obviously you want to be as ready as possible with all of your lines. Now, what that means. I'll just pause that one there, and if I can bring up this other one, let's see if this will work. Now, this is, if you haven't watched this video yet, this is my um, Sharpen Up series video on docking stern two with lazy lines, uh, and that's, there's this right there that we're talking about, uh, but I'm not going to go over the whole thing. There's fender setup, and there's all sorts. If you haven't watched this video, um, then this is the one I'd like you to go and see, because it explains all of the bits and pieces in detail, but what I'm explaining here, this is really important. Okay, setup is really important. So before you get even anywhere near the marina, one, make sure your fenders are out and they're all sorted out, and two, um, your stern lines. This is one of the most messed up things when people do this is tangled stern lines. So your stern lines want to be ready to go. So in this video, I explain my figure of eight method, which is if I gone too far on it or there we go. Okay, so you want to go from the cleat, and this is really important that it comes from the cleat and it goes out and around the push pit, and it's clear of the dinghy, and your lifelines are down, and then I roll down these figure of eights. Okay, these figure of eights, crisscross eights on the line, are going to stop it from tangling as you throw it out. Okay, loops, just constant loops, they tangle. They tangle. Now, this part is really important. I only want three or four loops, depending on how far I have to throw this in my hand when I throw this out, okay? Man, my hair was a bit different then. Um, can you provide the link to the video, please? Yes, I can. Um, it was actually the trailer video for this. Uh, it was the trailer video for this. It should have been on the preview, but I will find it. Um, Da, 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 da. Actually, Jason, if you could do me a favor and find that so I can keep going with this. Otherwise, I will send it um, I will send it at the end. Um, but this is really important that it goes right out and around everything because if you, the last thing you want to do, the whole, the whole theory behind docking and being organized is to mitigate problems happening, right? So if you throw this line and it's been threaded from the cleat inside the boat and then you throw it, then it's no good. And you, someone will pull it on, pull it tight, and then it's over top of your push pit, or it's around the auxiliary engine, or the wrong way. So these are things to double and triple check. And so that's why I drop my lifelines on the bigger boats, especially I drop my lifelines that are at the back, so that I've got space to to lay them over, and they're not going to get caught up. And then double check it. Then those pile of figure of eights, da, 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 and then just four, three or four, maybe five at the most loops in your hand. You do not need to throw anywhere which could be anywhere from 10 to 20 meters of stern line to the guy on the dock so that he has to then find the end, thread it through a ring or around the bollard, whatever it might be, and it's possibly tangled in a mess by then. So only throw them what you need to. It's much easier to throw. And when you look at the guy on the dock, don't throw it to him. Imagine him putting his arm out to one side. Sometimes they will. Throw it to his side. Please don't throw it straight in their face. Um, so that setup is really, really important. Um, so make sure you've got that, got that going on. All right, what else do I say here? That's the throw I'm talking about. And this is a good example here. So this is a shot of um, uh, uh, Vodoboska and this catamaran uh, crew throws this big rat's nest of line 
and then they've got to get it through the ring. So he's got to pass it through a ring. And now there's a tangle in it. So it's just a bit of a pain in it. Yeah. So that's what we want to do with that. Always have that ready and then lay down and in position. If that's your job, you check it, okay, to make sure that it's working. So that's cool. Now let's look at this approach. I want this one. I've got to hide that one. Okay, back to here. Um, where's my picture and picture gone? There it is. Okay, so at this point on the boat, they just want to make sure that everything's set up. Okay, they've called ahead. They're waiting for the dock guy to come in. And if you see the dock guy is over here and he's now coming into the picture. Um, okay, so looking to move into position. Now the wind in this diagram, pause here. Okay, the wind is running this way. Um, but it's not very heavy at all. Okay, you can see um, if you look on the top of the mast and stuff, there's, there's, there's like a six knot breeze. It is not a lot at all. Okay, but it still will affect uh, just, just not much. We want to be planning for it. Now, this skipper did um, what he wanted to do against my, um, my general plan, which is to go, which would be to carry on down here. I would carry on down here and then reverse and turn wind swinging into the bow. Uh, but he decided not to, that's fine. We, we went through it, it was all good, um, <clears throat> because it was so light. So he carries on, and give yourself a good amount of run. Now, in this case, there is a lot of space for this. It's not always gonna be like that. The other reason that I practice this go past and reverse in like this, is because say, um, can I change my color? Probably can, but I don't know. Now, um, say you didn't have this room, okay? Say this wasn't here, and all you had was this, and then the, the rest of this is boats all along here. Then you don't have the space and the luxury to reverse this big, strong, uh, big straight line that's really easy. Um, all right, so uh, let's get rid of those. So he's gonna, he's gonna move away, <clears throat> move away from the dock and then find a spot where you can really gain time in reverse. Now, if you've got um, single rudder boats, they're gonna react on the wash of the prop um, a lot faster than uh, twin rudder boats. Uh, but all being said, you need to give yourself time to get moving in reverse, all right? Because you've got no steerage when you're not moving, all right? So in this, in this case, to my point before, if this was a tight area, and we didn't have that space, you could go past this, check out what's going on, get all the way down here, and then get into reverse and get a nice straight line tracking well over your rudder in reverse before uh, you have to make that turn. And this way you're gonna have much more response on the rudder. Okay. <clears throat> now, if you see the person here, we've got one person in position on the um, port side, of the, uh, the starboard side of the boat there, and another person in position, oh, there's all the, that's, you can see there, he's got all of his um, lines set up, just as we do, and they're sitting on the back seats of the, the, the dock there. Now, our man over here on the dock, okay, he's pulling up the lazy line first. So he's pulling this up, and he's trying to figure out which line it is. You can already see he's got the wrong line in his right hand, so he's just dropped that. Now he's pulling up another two in his hands, uh, and this, you can see on the end of this one, it goes to show that they just, they just don't get them right all the time. So he's getting that already on the approach. You'd like to think that he's all ready for you when you arrive, but you don't necessarily get that, and you don't need him to have that line ready. It's just ideal if he does. So then he's decided, right, that's the one, and see how he moves. He's moved himself over this way a bit in order to give you space to reverse past, and then when you need to hook that line, he's gonna drag it back across. So approach is really, really slow here, which is fine, but had there been more wind here, you would just get pushed over this way, all right? You just keep getting pushed over this way. So in order to stay away from that boat as you're getting yourself into the berth, you would need that momentum swing. And without a thruster and a bow thruster and that, you come down here, you reverse back like this and take this turn, so that you swing, the mo all of the momentum of your boat is upwind, and it, and it drifts you upwind as you make this turn as well. 
And if the wind catches you, then it's just gonna, it's gonna have an effect of pushing you back um, and laying you against the boat where you want to be. <clears throat> so they come in. Now the first order of movement, let's see what drone shot I've got for this. Um, okay, so right now, they put the forward thrust on, okay? And because the rudder was central, the boat didn't shift one way or the other. I'll show you in the next video how that differs if you don't have your rudder central, because it's gonna to react to it straight away. But he's holding up that line and he's got it nice and taut. So here, she's got the boat hook off the starboard side at the moment. And whoever's got the hook, whoever's planning on lifting that first line, they need to just keep an eye and go right, which which line is our marinara trying to pick up? Which one does he want me to grab? And then just move to that side of the boat. Now, I would suggest every time being in this position, all right, um, get rid of those, being in this position um, on midships outside of the bimini instead of being down the back here. Sometimes I see people right on the back trying to hook the line from there because they can get closer. Unless your boat has a whole lot of space outside of that bimini, then you're much better off being up here in the clear where you can actually grab that line and then go straight to forward to the bow. Okay. Um, get our wind back in there. That's a good arrow. Don't, 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 don't be giving me crap. Okay, so now that he's done that, he's now receiving. I just got to back up a bit. Okay, so she's got the line, and then the first thing that happens, there it is, the throw of the stern line goes across. Now, they've given the leeward line, and he's got to take it all the way over onto that ring. Okay, ideally in this case, I'd want the windward line, because that ring's so far over, if we got the windward line on first, then we'd be able to drive against it. I'm a fan of putting the leeward line on when it's really windy, because you're not going to get off that leeward boat, you just have to lay against it. Um, but in this case, I think uh, Paul did it because he was at the helm on the starboard side and he's like, right, I've got this line, I'm going to throw it to you. But notice how the, the marinara can't just hook it around a bollard. He's got to feed it through a ring. Every marina is a bit different. Maybe they're bollards, maybe they're rings. But um, if they are bollards, they'll often um, tie them off for you on a windy day. So he, he got that and then he immediately threw it back to the um to the skipper on the back of the on the back of the dock now if you are if you've got a full crew and you can have someone on each stern line and you can have someone on a bow line then you as the skipper can stay on the helm that's great as long as everyone knows their role and knows how to, how to manage it <clears throat> now he goes over to the other side and he's receiving the second line there it is he throws it over he's going to feed it through now at this point they're going to start, um, they've now got power, okay, they've now got um, a taut line, get rid of my little circle and we'll zoom in on it, I've got a taut line here that we can drive against. So he's got forward, a little bit of forward thrust on in the gear, so he can drive against that line as long as he knows that everything's clear. Um, <clears throat> thanks for moving the drone, that's my fault. Okay, cool. So now, yeah, fixed line here, and that's locked off 0800, and it's got tension on it. So now it's your control line. You can drive against it. Okay, and now he, he can stay in gear and receive that line back. While that's been happening, we have moved the mooring line all the way to the bow and secured it off at the bow here. Now, you don't want to have to try and work really hard on that bow line um, because we're driving against the stern line at the back. So... One, if you're driving against it, the boat's that far forward. It's not going any further forward. Pulling harder on the stern line, on the bow line, will give you tension. Yes, if you've got it, but the easiest way to do that is actually just to ease out the stern line and pull up the slack to get tension on that bow line. All right, now, if is this all making sense to people? Please let me know if you're following or which part of this has um, has, has struck a, oh, I don't know what's going on here. We'll go over it a few times. <clears throat> So now with two with a, with a stern line on here and a stern line on here, he's now picking up, oh, thanks for moving the drone, Nick. He's now picking up the other lazy line for them to um, go on. But at this point, this is the absolute relax point. Okay, you are fixed. You're held in place. You can slow everything down and you can chill out um, because you're, you're fixed 
in three places, or even if you're only fixed in two places, you're, you're fixed bow and stern. Okay, so now he's pulling this other other lazy line up here, and um, whoever that is is ready to to grab the line. So they try and pull them up further away from the boat. Um, in this case, in Marina Castella that I shot this video in, there it was a winter, and they're setting people further apart from each other. In the summer, when you come along, you were going to be bumper to bumper with each boat. I've got a few of those examples coming up. Um, so he finally gets his line sorted out, maybe. Uh, and they're going to hook that up. If you're the person that is doing this job here, uh, is that the end of my video? That is, I'll get the next one queued up, stand by. Um, if you're the person doing that job, you do not want to um, bring, put your boat hook down and then try and lever it up, all right? Lever it up like this, you're just going to snap your boat hook, okay? You work hard, you snap your boat hook. Vertical boat hook, so this is something to tell all of your crew is vertical boat hook and lift it up vertically. If you've got extra hands, have someone there that simply takes the hook from the person who just picked up the line. Okay, well, we'll talk about those jobs. Um, can you mention which stern line to throw first? You said you prefer leeward first. Um, yes, I can. I prefer, okay, I'll, I'll go over that in a sec. We'll just finish this, um, finish this train of thought that I'm on. I have to make sure I stay on my train of thought. Uh, this is part two, here it goes. Okay, so she picks that up there. Vertical boat hook. There we go, very good. Um, and now he drops the lazy part and he's done and he'll probably just walk away and be gone. All right, hand over hand pulling, if you're, you're, you're cruise the one on the bow, you've got to remember to get them to pull in line towards the bow. A lot of people will grab it, walk forward with it, and then um, and then you're in trouble because the, clear drawing, uh, then you're in trouble because they might pull the lazy end of that tighter which could get close to your propeller if you're still in gear or whatever you might be doing at this point so hand over hand and keep pulling it forward to the bow just like this <clears throat> now i'm just going to skip through that a bit she's just putting that on now at this point down the back the skipper's easing out the um the stern lines to get further from the dock Okay, because we're saying, right, we need more tension on the bow lines. We need to be a bit further from the dock to be happy with it. So he's easing everything out. So at that point, you can just hold on the bow. They'll slip out a bit further and then go, okay, let's tension the lines from there. And I think I came up at this point just to chat her through that. And they had a, they had a whole mess of mooring lines. So um, that wasn't, wasn't their fault at all. <clears throat> all right, so that's, that's that one done. Let's whip briefly back to those questions. Okay. <clears throat> um, okay, I would have put the windward line on first. Why do you say the leeward is better? So, I would have probably put the windward line on first in that case as well, because of that direction and trying to stay farther from that boat. When the wind is really pinning you against the dock, Okay, and um, and uh, sorry, against the boat next to you, what you want to do is reduce the bow really coming around and your stern kicking out and the area right at the bow of the boats that doesn't have all the fenders on it. You want to avoid that happening. We're talking when it gets to 15 knots or something like that. It's going to pin you against that boat. Doesn't matter what line you've got on, you're not going to get away. Uh, catamaran slightly different. You will be able to pull away on a catamaran, but you're not going to be able to get away from that boat just by driving against one control line at the back. So I would have, in his case, thrown the leeward line anyway because that's where he is at the helm. Okay, in that shot, um, in that shot. Da, 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 da. He's at the helm here. And that's where his throttle control is, and that's where his thruster control is. That's where everything is that he's working on right there. So as he's backing in and he hits forward to stop the boat, he can toss that leeward line in this case um, because it's right there. But I really don't mind which one goes first um, in these situations uh, when it's when it's calmer like this or if you're going stern to wind. So there is a big argument out there about, right, what is it? Is it the windward line or is it the leeward line? It is situational dependent because if you come into a dock where they are pinning boats and stacking boats up, so the first one comes in, 
um, first one comes in and then and then locks up and then the next one comes in against the wind uh, sorry with the wind and pins against it and pins against it and pins against it then it's the leeward line that does the most easiest and best work to pin you in that position while they get the mooring line up uh, and it's the easiest to get secured it's just going to hold you there uh, but if you've got more than more than two crew then they can basically go at the same time yes i would prioritize the windward line in most of these situations all right um, can you mention which stern line to throw first? There we go, prefer the leeward first. So certainly when I'm single-handed, um, I will quite often do that leeward one first because it means I can put one control line on um, and, and pull against it and lay against the other boat. I'm planning on laying against that other boat. I've got my fenders right aft, they're in position to do this exact job. I am planning to lay against that boat. Someone commented on one of the docking videos the other day, he's like, three stars or something because I touched the other boat. Yeah, I'll plan to. This is Croatia. We're going to end up bumper to bumper on everything. I would rather control myself pressing against that boat, knowing I've put my fenders in the right place, than it happens anyway later on, trying to add a whole lot of power to get away from it. Okay, um, roughly how much wind before docking like this becomes really awkward for two novices? That's a bigger conversation, but... Um, if, I mean, if you start docking in 20 knots on the beam, you start docking in 12 to 15 knots on the beam, that is tough, okay? But um, uh, John, but we can have another conversation about that. You should book a call uh, with me on that one. Okay, so da -da 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 -da, got those questions done. Okay, so let's look at that same thing, but with a bit more wind. Um, I've got another shot of this here because they did it again. I was just around. Um, I happened to be meeting them, but I wasn't on the boat. So they did it on their own, and I had the drone, so I threw it up just for just for good fun. Uh, here we go. So um, there's not a heap more wind. There's twelve. There's about twelve knots running. Twelve to fourteen knots running here. Uh, you can see there's a lot more wave uh, out here that is cruising down, uh, but he's taking the same line that he took last time. Um, but we've got a, a definite stronger breeze um stronger breeze running so this is where he's got okay i'm going to set myself up to windward so that when i come back i'll drift into the right place i don't agree with this theory um you'll see why so um this one is starting over there you can already see the the pressure that the wind is putting on the bow that's making the boat skew all right, it's making it, it's, it's, it's skewing that way. Um, and he's trying to counter this now by turning, turning um, as, as he goes into it. Now, they've got a small dinghy out here. Some marinas will do this, um, depending on, on which berth you're going into, especially when you beam on, to come and try and help nudge your bow so that you don't lose it completely as it comes around. Sometimes I agree with them doing it, sometimes I don't. They're the marina staff. Um, they're usually pretty good with it. But this is the thing... At the moment, he's got his rudder like this, and he's trying to reverse further up this way because the wind has started pushing him this way. So this dinghy's coming in here to try and give him a nudge, but it's not done well together. As he puts that forward thrust on, it just kicks the boat over this way, and now he's trying to, oh gosh, trying to drive out of it. My app just shut down from working too hard, but you guys have still got that. But you can, he's trying to drive out of it, um, and and ends up because he's turning to port he's just getting up slowing more and more over that way so it's it's a it's a it's a it's a dumb situation so what you've got to be very careful what with on that is that you don't you don't try and fight the wind too hard when you're not going to win fighting the wind okay you've got to use it to your advantage so if he was exiting there i'll try and you know, as soon as this thing comes back up I think I'm asking a lot out of my system today. <laughs> um, if he instead tried to drive to recover this, we know, here he is, okay. We know that the wind's pushing us this way, okay? It's, it's, it's inevitable. So instead of driving and turning your boat this way and ending up with your stern going this way, drive and turn this way. 
you're going to push your stern out here and you're going to clear all of that and end up in a position stern to the wind where you're in control as opposed to having to fight the wind again. And so if he didn't have space, this all this massive amount of space that he's got, then it would it really wouldn't work. So we'll watch this come in again. It's a bit fast, Nick, sorry. So again, we have our man on the dock. He's pulling up the line. You're looking for this person for, um, for direction on which line to be picking up first. Again, we've got a person in position here to pick it up from the side. And you can see that wind is already pushing him across. And in this case, which line is Paul throwing? He's throwing again the one by his helm. And that's okay. He's going to end up over here anyway. But because you've got this boat pushing out here, I think he was pushing it too hard. He was pushing it too much. But as the skipper, the one of the things is to, and I have to stress this, I'll pause this and stress this right now, this situation here, okay? You will end up getting closer to the dock and you'll, you'll get distracted off doing another thing if you're going to manage your line as well. So make sure that you're not reacting with these big throttle movements. What I see is, oh, we're getting too close, we're getting too close. Then all of a sudden the skipper goes down, grabs the throttle and powers it forward. And then all of a sudden you're lurching forward. Now everyone's trying to manage lines around the boat. Um, maybe someone's just trying to get a cleat. Uh, a hitch onto the um, or a turn onto the winch like and it's going to snap onto that really hard when you do these throttle movements you need to be very um, controlled you need to be aware about what you're throwing in here so if you've got the crew members to do the jobs then get them on the line so you can just control your throttles <clears throat> <clears throat> all right now they were so close you could just hand it back to him okay cool he's getting a Right now, he's getting that turn around the, um, the cleat. And this, this maneuver right now, what he's doing is exactly what I do, is I'll get a turn around the cleat and I'll drive against it till I can get tension onto the line. And then I can control the boat with my rudder. Now this works when you've got, the control part works when you've got a single rudder. Okay, so if you've got a single rudder here, the thrust is pushing over the rudder. So if you turn the rudder like this, the push is this way and it moves the stern of the boat. If you turn the rudder like this, the thrust is over, the push is this way, and it pushes the stern of the boat this way. When you've got twin rudders, whoops, I can't draw two at the same time. When you've got twin rudders, the thrust is going straight down the middle, and it does not affect it nearly as much, okay? So you just need to be aware of that, that turning the helm when you've got twin rudders and you're stationary, it's not really gonna do anything. You need to concentrate on the tension on your lines. Okay, I'm just going to run that just for a bit while I grab a drink because I've been talking. Drink's right here. All right, so they get those lines on and now with that, with that power against this line, you can see how it's pulling the boat more out and, and against it so you can actually control the position of the boat. They don't even really need this guy right now. All right. He's just kind of, he's just making it move really weird. So then they're there and they're parked and you can stop freaking out again. All right. But that's, that's a good example of that trying to go further up to windward to, to solve this problem and just ending up down here anyway. This is why I like the stall tactic of reversing in like this so that my momentum is out here and out here when I come in and when I stop. So I've got, I've got good momentum, I've got good energy moving towards the wind which is eventually gonna come back. All right. Um, so if we, if we run over that is uh, number one, um, well, that didn't work. That's supposed to do my, do my titles. Da, live titles are on, error, corrupt. No, something's not working. Okay, that's right. So um, first thing is make sure everything's clear. Make sure it's already on the stern and you've got everything um, cleared. Lifelines are down on the back if you've got them. 
All right, big ball fender right on the stern at the level of the dock. If you come into a dock like Kut uh, in these, that dock is only this high above, um, above the water. So you need that fender on the stern to be really low. As far as positions, watch that um, docking video that I talked about, the Sharpen Up episode one, docking, stu, docking stern two, Lazy Lines and Crochet. I'll see if I can find it right now. Episode one, share. I had it there all along. I will put it into the chat. This is the video I was referring to. Um, uh, so if you see that, it's, oh, it's behind my thingy. Okay, so get it all prepared, get it all ready. Make sure the crew is briefed. All right, you're all sorted out. Have a tidy boat. If you've got a messy boat, if you've got things everywhere, then when you need to move and go get something, or you know you start tripping over things, something falls over and breaks, if there's glasses everywhere, all of this stuff will just cause problems, reduce all your stress. Okay, so that, and then on your approach, okay, where's the wind coming from? I need to counter the wind with my bow, or if I'm really lucky, like in our next example, um, you'll have the stern over, sorry, the wind over the stern. Now, if you can choose a port or a position, sorry, uh, on the dock where the wind is, is coming over the stern as you dock, that is, is really good. Where do we position the dinghy before starting our docking? All right, I'll jump ahead to a slightly different before I go to the next video. That's a very good question. Um, docking videos, you can go up there because the questions are getting lost. Where do we position the dinghy? So I did, this is what I filmed for you today, but it didn't, um, didn't work for me. Oh my gosh, that one's not there. Um, basically you want it on the windward side at the bow, okay? If you have not lifted the dinghy up onto the boat and you are indeed towing it, then it wants to be on the windward side on the bow. I'm sure I had another video of this one from today. Let me let me find that right now. Choose file. Oh, so many things. So many things to do. Is that that one? Is that that one? Is that one? Um, the, the idea behind this is you want it as far away from your propeller. You don't want to be dealing with, with it next to your propeller and uh, if it's on the leeward side, it's going to get squished and crushed in between um, in between your the, your dock, your thing, and the next and the next dock as well. So you just want to be super careful of that. Evelyn, shoot, shot this yesterday. Where is it? Where is it? To that one there, that one there, this one here. All right, open. unmute so you see how they're trailing it off their bow like this okay so this was a good example today of a nice uh, or yesterday of a nice docking um and it tied it to his windward side his port side he just tied it to his port side it looks like and trailing it off the bow um i'm depending on what dinghy i've got if i've got an engine on it i often put it on my midships cleat um if i know there's nothing left next to me but this is a bit this is generally pretty safe, just doing it on your off your bow on a short leash. You just want it to not be able to get tangled as it comes around. Okay, so it'll trail in like that. And if he has to drive out forwards, it'll it'll just pull around. It'll go to either side of the of the boat when you do that. So that's that's okay. Um, Jason's got another question there. Let's go back to Sony Cam. So that's that one. Um, when approaching and reversing are neighboring lazy lines ever an issue? Absolutely, okay? Um, but not as much of an issue as you would think. That one's best seen on my Stern 2. I do one in Baltic Marina. Um, it's called single-handed docking. Um, single-handed docking, it's actually my well, single handed docking. It's actually one of my most popular videos. Um, and it's, that's not single handed, there it is. Um, okay, I will share that in the chat as well for you. Copy, there we go. Um, so in this one, you'll be able to see boats that are a lot closer and the, and the lines. So those lines are gonna be coming down um, into the middle of the pier if you're, 
uh, if you're going into a marina, this is more pertinent when you're going into a marina um, because they're, they're coming down on, on an angle, but you haven't got much room to move. Um, the ones in Vs, this is actually, where's that other, other video? Sorry. <laughs> well, I never read the intro, so there we go. We just got it. Um, there's docking. Where is this? This. Okay. So I'm going to skip to the end of this one. If I can get around it. Okay. So see these lines here uh, coming down. It's they're, they're actually on quite a um, shallow angle when you're at a place like this because they've got more room out in front. These lines are on a shallower angle, so they become an issue when you're when you're getting blown across as you leave or as you try and come in. Um, so you've just got to you've definitely got to look for them. You've got to say, right, does this work today, or do I have to have another option um, up my sleeve? Um, whoops, go away. View. Uh, but yeah, they're definitely definitely an issue. Um, so though. The worst part is really just getting caught up on them if they catch on your keel. Okay, it's not so much of an issue with the rudder. They, that's not sitting as deep. Well, I've got a deep rudder on the answer, but uh, that's more central. It's when you do that turn, and if you start getting blown on, it's when you start getting blown onto something because it's gone wrong, uh, and then you can get a line that's either in front or behind of your keel. That is an issue, but that's um, we need to look at. Uh, look at how to how to remedy that that's another thing to do so jason said where's the best place for a skipper to stand when in reverse turn around facing the stern as if they were steering normally or face forward and look back matter of opinion um it depends on the makeup of your boat and i have an opinion as i do on all things so say this was my yacht and i'm sitting here like this often that throttle is down here so if, if this is the stern of my boat and this is the bow of my boat I like to sit like this, side on, hand on the helm like this, okay, and access to the throttle down between my legs. That way, I don't have to change my view all the way. I don't have to let go of this. Now, the great thing about that is these yachts, if you have your hand on the top of the helm and you do that, that is about as far as you'll ever need to turn your rudder when you're docking. Sometimes there's an exception, you really need to go full lock. But if you've got a good line, you should only have to do that. Now, what that does for you, it means that if you never let that go, that's your central point. Most people, not, okay, a lot of people will get lost turning the wheel going, oh, that's full, now I need to come back to middle, where is, I don't know where my rudder is. Center, turning to port, center, turning to starboard, center. So that is a good trick if you're sitting there and I have my back that way to to the obviously to the beam but i've got this vision 200 200 degrees vision okay without having to take my hand off the helm that's really important in reverse so that would be my um consideration on that you can see that position really well in this video docking in 40 knots i don't um i do not encourage you to to do this but here is the commentary version of that, which is worth watching just to see how we set it all up like this. Um, but that's uh, uh, that's docking in 40 knots, but I did that, I was at the helm, the others just filmed stuff, they're filming, but it was really, it was really windy. And that was a big, really good example of why I get the leeward line on first, because you've just got to pin down against the other boat. Um, David Pitt says, I chopped on my sail drive last year, 45 degrees sideways, as well as downwards into the slot when I was reversing it. Yeah, and that's that gets really tough. Sometimes they're, they're just in a really bad place. And it's, yeah. And if, and if you look at that spot on the dock and go, you know what, that's terrible. Tell the guys, look, that line's terrible. Um, put me on the next, you know, just go, I'll, I'll let someone else go. I'll, I'll be the next boat. <laughs> um, all right, so that one there. Now, let's go back to video pencil so we can look at these ones that are already in there. Um, how are we doing, everyone? Is, the, um, is, is, is it going okay? Would you like me to slow down, speed up? Can everyone hear me okay? Uh, just check in with that because if there's anything I can do better, I will. Um, and we're going to look at a few examples of a marina called Marslanitsa. 
that uh, I'm not sure is on anyone's itinerary, we'll see. Um, but this is a good one to, to look at. Let's bring that one up now. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, hang on. Da, 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 da. Ben Yunan says, five, I'm going to put that up. Yes, five stars. This is great. Okay, uh, I got completely distracted. I need to go. Speed is good. Sample trains, excellent. Okay, cool. Thank you guys for, for popping in. Um, hey, look, do me a favor. Uh, I need to pause that. Do me a favor and hit like on the video if you're watching on your account. Um, uh, it's good to good to get those likes, gets the algorithm rolling for me. The comments are all great and everything like that. David, Tom, Mitch, excellent. Thank you guys. No, I appreciate that. Appreciate that. So, okay, this is um this is Martinez Marquis uh, in Marslanitsa. It's a really beautiful spot, um, and it's one of my most favorite marinas. Um, uh, favorite marinas in in Croatia. Um, it's really well run, et cetera, et cetera. And it can get a wicked breeze running on it. So the the, the northwest, um, the northwest really comes in like this, okay? And and can end up basically because it follows the it follows the land um, and the and the point and everything like that, it comes in down this way. Okay, so uh, and it's the afternoon sea breeze. This afternoon sea breeze that really kicks up that can be 20 knots out there, 25 knots or something. So by the time it, it funnels down and gets a bit of break wall and everything in the marina, it's still running at 18, you know, 15, 15 to 18 knots makes a big difference. So um, the good thing about this marina is the staff are very, very good. Okay. They mm -hmm. are they are very good at what they do. You can see this guy's come out in his dinghy and he's just spoken to the guy and he's like, oh, yep. You've got a reservation or you haven't or whatever it is. Cool. Jump on in. Um, and then he hoons off. And he comes in. They, they really drive fast in that tender. Don't let anyone swim in the marina. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Da, 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 da. Sorry. I, my family's messaging me. I just need to double check. We missed. Uh, all right. So. Um, this is a really good example. I like this guy. So they, they came in, they set up, they gave themselves a heap of distance to reverse up. Oh my gosh, it's, it's died again. All right, I'm going to have to talk to the developer. I just paid money for this app. Um, not happy about that. It works. For what it's good for, it's good, but mostly it's, let's go. Okay. Move forward a little bit, back a bit. Okay, so good uh, good approach distance. They're saying, right, they're not necessarily sure exactly which line he wants to know. Oh, they are now because this is where he is. So he's starting to pick up those lines for them. Cool, all good. Um, and the wind is, you can see the waves really hitting hitting on here and here and here. The, the wind's quite strong out there. So it's definitely pushing down. Where's the flag? Yep, it's pushing like this. Okay, so they keep... They keep adjusting their line a little bit because the guy's sorting out which line he's pulling up. And you can see, let me, uh, you can see that the, if you look um, below, I know, can you, can you see that, that line that he's starting to pull up? Because it, it was over top of his line, the line that he was going to drive in, um, he's lowered it down into the water again until the guy gets closer, until the yacht gets closer. Okay. So. As they approach, when you're approaching into the wind like this, notice how he's not going fast at all, yet he has good control. This is all to do with the stern being directly into the wind. You can do this as slow as you like, effectively, with your stern into the wind. You still need to maintain some sort of control with your rudder, but it's pretty good. So this person's right on the back to hook this line, except they're still outside everything. So they're in a good position. Cool as you were, they've got that line. Now that line's immediately picked up and it's going forward, great. They haven't even got a stern line on yet because they're so far out, all good. Oh, there was the first throw. They threw a mess of line and it didn't get anywhere. I didn't even see that when I prepped this video. And another messy throw, but they got it done. Okay, now you see the guys just, now that shows 
You see the wash, I'll go back five seconds. This shows that he has good throttle control. See that? One, his rudder is straight. So the, the boat didn't kick one way or the other. Two, it didn't lurch forward, it just stopped. Okay, and then he's gone back to neutral. You don't wanna stay in gear. So that was really well done. Now they've got someone, oh my gosh, it's busted out on me again. Um, now they've got someone on the other side um, to pick up the other line. Cool, it's been handed over. And as long, it sounds like this, it looks like this crew really had their stuff sorted. They were, they were working well together um, and they, ha they had their jobs in mind. So this is a really good, well-briefed crew and it's something you wanna, wanna strive for. But long and short of this is, he's now driven, he doesn't really need to drive against this stern line at the back here because the wind is pushing him against it nice and tight. They've got their bow line on. Now they're sorting out their second stern line. They are sitting pretty. They're really, really good. They're organized. I really like that, okay? So another first one in the dock. So I'll just pause that here. The next one coming in, this is what we really want to talk about. Um, okay, David, can I have a link to the marina? It looks great. Yes, I can give you a link to that marina. Can you, how do you handle docking in very narrow marinas like Cortula? I looked for a docking video I had on Cortula. Um, I looked for it. Uh, I thought I had it, but I couldn't find it. Um, the closest one I've got is that single-handed, uh, single-handed with lazy lines that I do. Uh, but it was a, such a calm day. Cortula, we can, we'll, we'll, I'll come to that one, Matthias. We'll talk about that one in a little bit. Um, and then and the, the short answer is you reverse all the way. So you're never turning around in that marina. You reverse all the way into that marina and it's about mitigating risk and fenders. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll get to that one. So immediately I look at this guy and I go, right, there's red flags going off here. Watch this. Bow thrust left. Bow thrust right. Bow thrust. What? Nope, that was the wrong bow thrust. Bow thrust back. Okay, so there's already some indecision about what's going on with this with this this crew, so they don't quite know where they're headed. More bow thrusters, more bow thrusters. Okay. So remember, from that moment that you go from forward to stopped to reverse, you're going to lose a bit of control. That's why you need space in order to get tracking and get moving, um, moving well. Okay. So um, I'm just going to spin this around. More bow thruster. Like I mean, I, I, I bow thrusters are great, but you don't need them at this point. Like he's stern into the wind. You saw that other boat. They have a bow thruster. They didn't even need to use it once. Okay. So as they start to come back here, the line is pretty good. All right. This this is looking really good like this. Except he doesn't know. I, I I'm speculating that he doesn't quite have his rudder position sorted out. He doesn't know exactly where it is. So then more bow thruster. Okay, and, and the other way, he's just, but, 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 what, why? There is no need for this. Okay, so that's kind of red flags, and already his line, his line's going like this, which is doesn't where he want to go, so more bow thruster. Now, I'll come back to this point. This is my little note to say, Nick, come back. Um, as they come around, this is a typical situation where, see this line here? They can't tell exactly what we can tell from the drone, but look at the position of this lazy line. It's running all the way under here, and it's in a really bad, bad position. Um, and this is, you know, sometimes they get tangled up, sometimes they get all mixed up, but that's the one they've got to go for. So they're giving it to them. It's all ready to pick up, that's it. But And the dock stuff, see how he brings it back over in order to not let it get um, twisted up. So that's cool, but as if to just prove my point, Notice that the person picked it up here. Now they're trying to pass it through the stanchions of the bimini to try and be able to walk it forward. Okay, that's why you want to be picking it up from this position, not from the other position. Now, also, can you see what's about to happen here? That's not a really, it's a great arrow, but it's in the wrong place. Um, he's really close to the dock. I haven't seen this one a little. There's the forward power, as if to be exactly the opposite of the last guy. Now we've just moved another two meters forward uh, and everything's moving around like crazy. Finally, this person has managed to get the around the bimini and is moving it up. 
and they've thrown uh how was the throw i have to go back a few seconds to see how the throw was yeah, a lot of line a lot of line going out okay and he's trying to find where he's going to put it on but they've got this side on so that they can pull against so there's just a number of combinations there that I want you to see to go, okay, this is what happened. This time he's like, okay, I don't need so much thrust to drive myself forward, but I still need some. And you can see his lines are on this angle and this angle. The guy wants to fix the line so that it will pull the stern over like this, which it is doing. More thruster, okay. As much as it feels like he needed that thrust then, he didn't need it because the wind is not sending him that way. It's his control that's sending him that way. Um, so this is another thing that you want to brief your crew on. See this here. If, and if they can see this video and say, look, if you get this situation, don't panic. What's happened here is it's, it's hooked up underneath another line. You just need to get this up. Someone, hey, bring me the hook back up to the bow. You get it up so that you can hook it from the other side and let the other one fall away. But it happens. And it will fluster people if they don't know what they're expecting. But in all saying that, the whole idea here is right now you should not need to rush. You have got a line on here. You've got a line on here. You could sit there just ticking away in forward gear, relaxed, and using your rudders if you've got a single rudder, twins kind of, but using those lines to just hold you in position in this case until that gets sorted out at the front. There needs to be no rushing. There needs to be no, um, uh, no freaking out. Yeah. Uh, okay. Huh. What next? So I'm de dealing with messages on what, what's happened, things as well, uh, for someone trying to get through. Um, okay. That's fine. What I wanted to get back to before is you'll notice, let's just play this through a little bit longer. <clears throat> when you come in, be this guy. As soon as you're docked, the next boat that comes in is going to need either help or they might bang into your boat. So you need to be up and ready to assist or to just manage your fenders. Um, the, the best piece of advice I can give you for this is see this ball fender back there that's no longer doing anything. As soon as you're docked and in place, go and get this ball fender, bring it up and stand on the side with it like I do, just waiting for the next boat to come in. So that then whatever goes wrong, you just drop it into the impact zone. You can't stop these boats. And if you push on them, you just bend um, stanchions and lines and things. All right, big ball fender, boop, just put it in place and be there to run interference. There's too many cooks in this kitchen already. You don't need to tell them what to do or what not to do, but you can just put a fender in and stop some damage happening, okay? And I do that every single time I dock. As soon as we're up, and if I'm still busy and the next boat's coming in, I say, Mahina, can you take the fender up and be on standby? Uh, all right, <clears throat> yeah, yikes. <laughs> put the yikes up. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Okay. And now they've got time to sort out those those mooring lines at the front. But you see that sort of is like a I don't really know what's going on. Look at the at the bow of that boat. All right. So now they're reversing against the bow line using thruster one way, the other way. Oh gosh, this is a great example. Um, be glad you don't have thrusters. All right. But anyway, that oh more th why that way? Uh, yeah, it's strange, strange. Anyway, so that is all good. Now, what I wanted to talk to you about how you can help each other because we talked about this. If you're going in a group, one comes in, the next one comes in. What you can do, this boat comes in, cool, gets tied up, set, set, excellent, well done. Next one's going to come into this position here. Great. Okay, that's what we want to see. So. Ask the marinero to pull this line up, the lazy line, and he'll pull it up tight so that you can, from this position on your boat, you can hook that line up and you can take it forward to about this point and hold it so that all of the stuff that might, the lazy, the back end of that line can just fall down to the water and will never get near their propeller when they get to the dock. And you can pull that line up and then you can just hand it across here to the next person to take to the bow. You will save them about 30 seconds, or let's say 20 seconds if they're really onto it. You'll save them 20 seconds of mucking around, leaning over and grabbing it. 
and that 20 seconds on a windy day could mean a lot. So that is 100% what I'd suggest to do. Get this line, this extra line pulled up and ready and then everything else sinks down there. From here, you just hand it across already taught and they can walk it forward to their bow. Okay, that was that is one of the things I can say is gonna help you out from boat to the next boat to the next boat as you dock together, help each other out like that. All right, and then fenders. All right, any spare fenders from the port side that are not being used, get them over on the starboard and just be there to mitigate risk. This <laughs> guy's um, <laughs> stressing me out, fair enough. Uh, I need a beer. I'm actually, I need a something, but I've got more work to do tonight, so it's going to be sponsored by Red Bull. Mm. And it was all good to the end. Kind of. It, in my mind, it started a bit, I don't know what I'm doing. But anyway, that and that's in the easiest position to bring your dog in. Now, if you are stressing about this maneuver, I suggest get your dinghy up and stow it somewhere where you don't have to deal with it trailing off the bow of the boat. Don't have to deal with it. It's just another thing you do not have to deal with. Okay, if you've got crew members sitting around, picking their nose, waiting for you to you know, get ready, say, right, let's get the dinghy up for this passage because I know I'm going onto the dock when we get there. If you're doing a short trip around for an hour and then you want to use the dinghy again, cool. But if you're going to sail a passage, one, you'll sail faster if the dinghy's up. Two, when you get to that dock, it's already up and you don't have to think about trailing that dinghy around, okay? My, my advice on that one. Okay, what have I got here next for you guys? I think I'm going to start getting into just full question answer situation now. Um, soon, I'm just wondering if I've got one more clip that I got for you. No, I tried to and it would not go to the iPad, so that's all right. Um, but yeah, that was this was the one I wanted you to see because that kind of showed showed it all. All right. This approach should be really, really easy. And as another point, if anyone, it's not not anyone, if you get yourself ready and you're starting to come into the to the marina and you think, right, this is this is all good, okay. Um, and it's not feeling right, then don't force the issue. Go, oh no, this line doesn't feel right. I feel like I'm on a bad line. No, you know what? I'm just gonna push back out. It's much easier to bail out earlier. Go out, reset, go, okay, I'm gonna get more speed earlier so that I can track better in reverse as I come in. Do that, okay? Don't freak out about, oh no, but I have to do it now. Don't rush it. You'll really regret that. So um, yeah, just one big piece of advice there is just be as absolute ready as possible and then come in, test the speed, and go from there. Now, um, Matthias said, how do you handle docking in a very narrow marinas like Korchla? I mean, it's exactly the same way. You've just got to manage it. I wonder if I can get a, um, let me see if I can get a map up to look at, cause you guys are looking at going to Korchula as well. Um, and I want to look at the dock in Stornomolska as well to show you that one, continue. Um, because yeah, that's, in fact, I'm, I'm already up at Stonomoska, so let's start that one first. Off Chiovo, Sutivan, Stonomoska. Okay, I think I need to get rid of that. I'm going to do this like this. I'm going to do a screenshot. Oh my gosh. How do I screenshot these days? Hmm. There we go. Um, now, Stortomolska is, I think it's on your, on your first, on your, your, your course for the first night, um, the first night. So we'll look at that one. Um, once docked, where do you grab the, the, the neighboring lazy line from the dock or with the hook? From the dock. You can't get it with the hook. You need to go onto the dock and pull it up. And what I would do is not necessarily, if the marinero is there, don't uh, don't go and do it for him. Just say, hey, can you get us the lazy line? We'll prepare it for the next boat. But it should be down 
tied to a very similar position that your starboard one or your single one. A lot of docks are only going to give you one as a smaller boat. Um, you should be able to pull that up from there. They should just be sequentially along like that. Um, <clears throat> okay, there we go. Here's Stordanoska. Oops. Okay, and we had another question there. Are there any real etiquette no-nos when docking, spending a night, or leaving a port in Marina in Croatia? Um, yes. Yes, there are. The no-nos are basically trying to override the docking staff. Okay? So the reality is they're going to say you're going to go here. This is the position we're going to put your boat. And you can say to them, hey, would you mind if we're in this position because of whatever reason? I don't know. Uh, but, but if he says you're going here, that's where you're going. Um, telling them they're wrong or telling them to do it a different way or, or pushing in like that is a no-no. And this is the pushing in thing you're going to have to look at. If you're, you're queuing up, so if we're in somewhere like Kut, um, where there's, there's no real, it's not a queue, there's just this group of boats that are waiting to get on the dock, okay? So you've got to figure out how many boats were there before you got there as you arrive, one, two, three, four, five, whatever like this, and then figure out which ones arrive after you so that they're after you, okay? So just understand that you're in a queue there. It's a gentleman's game. You've just got to be patient. You want to go through it and do it nicely. Um, as far as um, when docking, spending a night, or leaving a port of marine in Croatia, uh, there's I mean, not much else, I don't think. Um, if, if anything more comes to me, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can see if I can figure that one out, but uh, I don't think so. Um, so this is Stodomolska. So for the group that we're, we're chatting with at the moment, this is your first first dock um, for the night. And oops. The northwest is going to be blowing, so that the, the, the sea breeze, is pretty much going to be doing anywhere in this sector like this. Okay, so it is a cross dock wind and it's relatively sheltered in here. Okay, if you look at um, Stordomolska as a, as, a, as a as a zoom out, like it's going to come down the, the canal between Shelter and Brach, uh, sorry, sorry, Shelter and Chilvo, um, and it's going to be breezy out there, but the hills are going to shelter it mostly, but there will be a bit of wind blowing through here. So you want to be aware of that. You're going to be docking along here like this, boat, 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 boat. Okay, so this is going to be directly on your bow. So if the wind is indeed blowing along the dock like this, you've got two options as to how you dock. Okay, and I would suggest that when you're docking, you come down here and then you reverse back and into your spot because that is going to counteract the wind on your bow as you come around and then you'll lay down against the boat that was there before you, okay? That way like that. If, if you do the opposite and you, you set your boat up like this, that's a boat, oh my gosh. Okay, and then reverse back and try and go onto the dock there, then you're going to, by the time you get to this point, the momentum on your bow is going to be there, the wind is going to be there, and it's going to swing you further and further over. You don't have the bow thruster necessarily to stop that swing, and the boat's going to be pushing over like that. There's not a whole heap of room to come right across here and think you're going to drift down onto it like that. Okay? So if we look at wind coming like this, and then your boat spots are along here like that, Jason can come in with his boat and he can reverse in and get it docked, tied up. Hopefully there's another yacht there for him already and he can lay against that too. And then you guys can help out with your um, mooring lines on the windward side and get everyone sorted out like that. Fenders up, ready for them to come down and expect their bow to blow faster than the stern. Um, with, where is my, okay, with something like Corchula, I wonder if I can, Get a, I'll get another screen grab of Cortula, um, because that that is a that is a thing. I was just annoyed that I don't have the footage of it. I even did a reel of Cortula the other day, so I have something, but I couldn't find the docking. I had a docking catamaran um, 
the shot there. Okay, there's cool. There. <clears throat> oh, okay. This app keeps crashing. I don't know if it's my iPad or being old, or if it's um, or if it's the app, or if it's my iPad being old. Okay. bring that one back up okay so this is Cortula Marina HCI Cortula okay it runs like this wind is generally going to be blowing something like this um, or like this uh, especially with the sea breeze or however so you've got it directly cross on you as you enter the marina now this is a tight marina um, I don't actually I should have done the Let's have a look at the map view. No, no, that's not happening. Um, it's a tight marina, so I just, uh, whoops. I've just been not showing you the marina. I obviously messed it up. Where's it gone? Guess where's that from? Having techn technological issues, everyone. Sorry about that. Let's fix this. gone ah that's not the one I want though it'll do the trick but that's not what I was after okay so as you come and approach the marina you have the bigger boats are going to be parked out here like this you'll have big gullets stacked up on each other like this this is the local dock you're not going in here all right your only entrance is to come up into here um, this strip down here and down here is generally going to be taken up by um, generally going to be taken up by um, permanent berths and stuff like that. So that means all of this spot here and all of this along here and some of this. So let's just take that out of the equation. Uh, these are the spots you're going to be going in. Now this area here is really tight okay it's really tight like from bow to bow between these boats 30 feet so you cannot actually have your yacht out of the berth without it being turned okay so this tends to be a spot that you man that's a messy diagram now this tends to be a spot that you have to leave once you know like the, the first boat kind of has to leave and then and then you have to leave once you get out so um, as smaller boats they're probably going to want to put you somewhere in this vicinity okay if you're 35 38 feet they're going to end up in here i usually get docked around here 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 like this um, bigger ones tend to bigger catamarans tend to get put over here so this is sort of your zone here now the biggest piece of advice that i give you here is that you're going to turn around out here and you're going to reverse your yacht in all the way. All right, that's supposed to be a reversing yacht. Um, you're going to reverse all the way into here. Generally, that's going to put you reversing up into the wind, which is good. It's a good control point. Okay, um, and reverse up into here, and you just go slow. Just go slow, and you you take your time. Um, it is a um, idea if you're trying to get into Cortula and you don't want to deal with the wind and you don't want to deal with that is to arrive there early if you arrive by arrive by 2 p.m oh that didn't work uh that's supposed to do live titles but anyway if you arrive by 2 p.m then you're going to be getting in a bit earlier than the crowds and so there should be more space there for you to dock which makes it a little bit easier but it's not it's not always always super easy at all so that's that's the main main crux of it um and it's it's tough it's just a tough marina to get into sometimes so um one of the biggest things that i i, I say that a lot don't i one of the biggest things um one of the biggest pieces of advice that i can give to this um this docking situation is when you're in a tight place you're going to end up 
um, you're going to end up. I have right. Sorry, dealing with a lot of a lot of hats at the moment. Um, you're going to end up laying onto a boat at some point, or perhaps in a situation where um, I need a blank screen to draw this one on. No, that's all right. Uh, so if you're if you're in a in a marina pier like like this. And there's boats parked here and here, and there's boats parked here and here. Ugh, I can't draw boats today. My brain's broken. Um, all the way. And you come out of a berth like this, and the wind is blowing hard this way. You could end up in a position where you get pinned on these boats. And if you see this starting to happen, as in you get out over here and you're out of control or you know, you're trying to go from forward to reverse and you're just blowing down that way. If you feel that starting to happen, just let it happen, okay? Let it happen. Now, I've said to people in, a, a bunch of times, you would do less damage in a marina when you got into trouble if you turned your engine off and jumped in the water than you would if you stayed on board and tried to fix it. Meaning this, if you stop your boat, so say you're going somewhere, oh, this is going wrong, just bring it to a stop. If it's going backwards, use forwards to bring to a stop. If it's going reverse, bring it, use forwards to bring to a stop. Uh, you know what I mean. Stop the boat and then go to neutral. Then mitigate the risk. Go crew members, can you go to the sides where we're going to have impact? Start moving fenders around. And if you're going to lay down against the bows of three different boats or whatever it is, just get out there and hold it and put fenders in the way. Because if you do that, the boat will settle against those boats. I'm sure people will come out and help you as well. And you'll probably do zero to very little damage. It's, it's, it's the anchors into the side of the boat that's the main problem. Whereas if you try and drive your way out of that, flustered and not ready to do it, then you'll add power, you'll add momentum, and you'll start crunching fiberglass. Or you'll catch keels over mooring lines or rudders or props. And that's what breaks stuff. So there's plenty of people around to help. And in a situation like that, we'd likely get lines onto the windward side of your boat and pull it back across the marina so you've got a place to go out. There's a lot of people around to help. But if you start adding power, you'll bang into stuff, you'll break boats, you'll break things, and you won't have a good holiday. So if I can have you take away something from this is like, right, make sure that you don't add power to fix your problems, all right? If, if you're heading towards a bit of an impact or something like that, you're far better off just making the boat, not going forward and reverse and stopped, and then mitigate the risk. Go up, put some fenders in the place, and let the boat settle down there. If you're going to drift aground because you found yourself in a shallow spot, that's different. Okay, that's but that's not in a marina. You're you're in the wrong place in that case. But yeah, like that's that's a huge part of it. So I hope I hope that that rings a little bit true. Um, so I'm going to sign off shortly. Um, if you've got any more questions, please put them into the chat now. Uh, I'm happy to answer it. I'm happy to go back onto some videos that we've already seen um, and talk about that. Uh, but I think the the best bit of advice really as I can give is. Sorry, I keep saying that. The, the, the things I want you to look at is go look at those three videos, for examples. The docking in 40 knots video uh, with the commentary, that is not to seek to plan the dock in 40 knots. That is to see the position of sitting and how to manage the, how to manage the wheel. Um, also, the, the two docking, docking ones show the line and the position. And it's a, it's, a, it's a breakdown again of the order in which we do things. So we reverse into the berth. Um, we throw the stern line out. Actually, I think I have got another video I can talk over on this. Where is it? Docking. It's the main one. Look at it. Sharpen up. Here we go. It's... That didn't work. That didn't work. Where's my sharpen up? Mm -mm -mm -mm. No, I've lost it. I think that means I need a drink. I think I need a drink. Mm. Well, we'll leave it at that. If I don't see any more questions come up, I'll leave it at that. 
Ben, really, really, oh, what is going on here? I don't know what, what scene, oh, it's because my scenes were all off. I've done too many live streams in the last however long, obviously. Um, oh, I hear all the comments. Thank you very much. Ben Union, really helpful. Thank you. You're most welcome, Ben. That's that. Thank you, Mitch. Thanks, you're right. David, many thanks, useful listen. Oh, you a drink if you ever find us on the same place. Look, thank you, David. Hey, uh, if you guys did like this and you want to buy me a drink, there is a super thanks button on the chat. Uh, if you're signed into YouTube, you can hit the super thanks. You can give me three pounds or 10 pounds or whatever it is to buy drinks. That would be great. Uh, we're get, I get a big kick out of the super thanks, but yep. Um, <laughs> mooring ball suddenly seems more appealing than Cortula. This has been really helpful. Thank you. Uh, you're most welcome. And look, go... It's, it's not always that bad, and it's a timing thing. Midday at Cortula, really easy to get onto the dock. Early in the morning, really easy to get off the dock. 4 p.m., really hard to get on the dock. Busy and windy. But you are in. You guys are looking at coming in May, so it's not so bad anyway. Um, excellent. Uh, Sam of all trades, great session. Thanks, you're most welcome, Sam. Timothy says, what kind of gin do you like? Oh, now we're talking. Um, there's one in Croatia that we drink called Carbon. Um, it's it's really good. Uh, it's uh, Carbon Gin. It's made in Croatia. We love this one. Um, but we, we, we drink Hendrix as well, uh, or we drink Grey Goose. That's not gin, Nick, but I still drink it. <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, it's good. Uh, Dory says, thank you. You're most welcome, Dory. JP, thanks. Nick, most appreciated. No worries. Timothy Upman, thanks. Excellent. All right. Look, thank you very much, guys, for joining. Um, yeah, I will see you. Hopefully, we'll catch up a little bit in um, May when you're here. Um, where our Sharpen Up flotilla is now full as well. So we'll all be out on the water together, kind of, at some sort of way like that. So thanks for joining. Um, and yeah, remember to hit like on that video if you haven't already. That would be great. Um, and this will be a public video once we've finished the stream, so you can share it with anyone that might want to watch the replay or to, to prepare them for whatever's coming up. I'll make sure I add the other three example videos to the, um, to the stream. And there's one more actually where I did, um, uh, I did an example of single-handed docking where there's no one on the dock, so you've got to throw the lines yourself, and I'll, I'll put that in as well. So anyway, thanks a lot, everyone. I will catch you in the season. Bye.